My fellow citizens, community members, business leaders, city employees, and Issaquah City Council members, I'm pleased to appear before you tonight to present my State of the City Address. During my past three years as Issaquah's mayor, many of you have visited my office at City Hall. Inside you will find my favorite tool, a whiteboard, along with quotes that inspire me and occasional notes from my grandchildren. My whiteboard consistently features Issaquah's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Mapping out our city's SWOT analysis helps all of us at City Hall to see the larger picture, set priorities, and continually focus on what is next. Alongside my whiteboard, however, you'll find two other tools, an eraser and plenty of dry erase markers. Thanks to consistent feedback from citizens, community leaders, city staff, business owners, and regional partners, this SWOT analysis is a fluid, ever-changing snapshot of Issaquah's roadmap for reaching our ultimate vision where we are the best place uh, to invest in your future. In a way, this evolving whiteboard represents what makes Issaquah so special. By listening to each other, considering all perspectives, and setting common goals, we are a stronger community. It all comes down to partnerships. Whether through citizen engagement or relationships formed at the regional level, Issaquah's partnerships are essential to our future success. Our history proves this, from the creation of the Issaquah Highlands to the recently voter approval of Sound Transit 3. You may ask, what's on your whiteboard today? First and foremost, the state of the city is strong, but challenges remain. Tonight you'll hear about some of these strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And together, using partnerships on an individual, group, and agency level, we will achieve our common goals. Our number one focus as a community is clear tackling traffic. Both a threat and an opportunity, traffic must be addressed at a regional level. Congestion doesn't stop at our city boundaries. <clears throat> Last November, during a regional transportation summit hosted by Issaquah, we heard a common theme from state county, and local leaders. We are not alone. Cities surrounding Issaquah and throughout the Pacific Northwest are battling with regional pass-through traffic on a daily basis. If you weren't able to attend the summit, here's the Cliff's Note version. Regional problems mandate regional solutions. No single city in our area is isolated and unaffected by any other city. People today and in the future will continue to move between communities to access jobs, schools, entertainment, housing, recreation, and more. As a region, we must work together to ensure our transportation system reflects the reality of our interconnectedness. I'm thankful we have dedicated partners committed to working together on this regional issue. 
In the first quarter of 2017, this year, technical staff from each city in King County plan to meet, share existing data, and develop a regional arterial network which will help the group identify long-term funding solutions. As part of that effort, I plan to create a regional partnership focused solely on how to relieve congestion along Issaquah Hobart Road. This partnership will include state and county representatives along with several local cities. Our corridor study of that, uh, uh, that road, which is currently underway thanks to uh, King County's partnership, is just one step needed to tackle this consistent headache. You'll hear a common theme tonight. Partnerships turn ideas into action. A great example is the success of Sound Transit 3, which will someday bring light rail to Issaquah. Long-term transportation solutions don't happen overnight. Voters' strong support of ST3, however, proved that our vision for planning for mobility at a regional level is on the right track. Light rail, however, won't fix today's traffic congestion. Next month, we will celebrate the groundbreaking of an exciting project which will build a new road connecting East Lake Sammamish Parkway to Costco's international headquarters. This significant capital project won't, wouldn't be possible without Costco's funding assistance and partnership. This is a great example of how we're working together with local employers to grow Issaquah's economy while also investing in infrastructure. Creating more good paying jobs within our community and reducing the amount of time we all spend in our cars is a win-win. To expand transit service options for residents and employees in two pockets of our community, Squawk Mountain and Talus, Issaquah will partner with King County Metro and local stakeholders this year to develop an alternative services pilot program. Last fall, after significant public input, Issaquah placed a 50 million traffic improvement bond on the ballot. While a majority of Issaquah's voters supported it, the measure didn't reach the required 60% yes threshold needed for approval. It's clear, however, that a majority of Issaquah voters are supportive of making local investments to reduce congestion, enhance safety, and improve our local streets. As a next step, we will be conducting some research to answer everyone's question, what's next? How do we as a community invest in needed infrastructure improvements? As we begin a new year, I always like to reflect on the past. Issaquah has a strong history of implementing smart growth philosophies, and our most current chapter reflects that tradition. In 2012, to protect Issaquah's existing neighborhoods and natural environment, the city adopted the Central Issaquah Plan to guide the long-term evolution of our existing commercial core into an urban center. While this long-range plan sets an important vision, it also requires periodic tweaks to incorporate changing conditions. Using a moratorium this year, we pushed the pause button to address several issues before more development proceeds, including architectural fit within the community and availability of affordable housing. The city is continuing its work to develop a housing strategy. Through analysis and feedback from residents, employers, service organizations, and builders, the housing strategy 
will inform ways in which the city can help shape the affordability and types of housing in Issaquah. Our goals is to enhance the city's character and environment while providing a diversity of choices to meet the needs of people who choose to live, work, and play in Issaquah. As we all know, more people will choose the Pacific Northwest as their home in the coming years and decades. We are fortunate to live in a very desirable region, one that attracted more than 86,000 new residents in the past two years alone. Throughout our community, from Facebook to local coffee shops, many community community conversations are taking place about growth. Understanding our residents' views is essential as we focus on future planning efforts. Speaking of growth, the city is also closely partnering with the Issaquah School District as it plans its future facilities within Issaquah to meet current and future population demands. <clears throat> Now, turning back to my whiteboard. A key focus for 2017 is service delivery. The city of Issaquah is, after all, in, business, in the business of service. Each of us is dedicated to serving our residents, businesses, and larger community, no matter their background. Several planned capital projects on the horizon will target traffic congestion, enhance our parks, and improve our public assets. As we work to deliver these amenities, the city is approaching each project with a focus on continuous improvement and partnership. Now's the time to revisit our capital improvement plan process, which will help better inform decision making as we develop future city budgets. Meanwhile, a focus on cross-functional teams will also enhance our internal project management. Here in Issaquah, we have plenty to celebrate. From our breathtaking natural beauty to Issaquah's inspiring community members, it's no wonder our city is a desirable place to raise a family, build a business, or enjoy retirement. And in 2017, we have another reason, 125th anniversary. In the coming months, look for a variety of opportunities to celebrate our history from community events to partnerships with local businesses and nonprofits. As we honor our past, we are also focusing on the future. Along with delivering important capital projects in 2017, Issaquah is moving full steam ahead on long-range planning efforts that require significant partnerships within the community. We're shaping the vision for our parks, assessing your needs through a healthy community strategy, and reflecting on our shared vision for Old Town. Each of these efforts will require significant public engagement, from neighborhood meetings to new online engagement tools, further strengthening customer connections ensures we as public servants are providing exceptional customer service. As we recognized earlier this month, our community is preparing to say goodbye to the Issaquah Press, the oldest newspaper on the east side, which will cease operations later this month. The press has told our community stories for the past 117 years. Now more than ever, it is essential that we foster engagement opportunities, ensure citizens remain informed about important community decisions that will affect their everyday lives. In conclusion, Tonight has personal significance for me. This will be my last State of the City address. 
After much consideration, I will not be running for re-election as your mayor. While 2018 will be a year of change for Issaquah's leadership, I'm confident our community's strong partnerships will ensure a smooth transition. We have an exciting and challenging year ahead, and I intend to be fully engaged as we continue our mission to provide quality services that support a sustainable, safe, and welcoming community that is inclusive for everyone. As you'll hear throughout our birthday celebrations this year, history happens every day. I'm excited to see what Issaquah's next chapter holds. Thank you very much.